So you want to strip off about three quarters of an inch of insulation from both your conductors. Then I'll use the jaws of my hybrid wire strippers here by Kinepix to make a perfect J-hook. If you have standard wire strippers, you probably have a hole right in the handle that can help you with a J-hook. And if it's a little open like that, just crimp it down with your wire strippers to close off the opening. We'll do the same thing here for our bare ground with the jaws making our J-hook. And then we'll start off in the order of operation that is ideal, which is the ground first. This is something I haven't done in the past. And when it comes to the screwdrivers, a flathead like this is gonna give you a lot of torque, but it's gonna slip off. A Phillips is gonna keep you on that screw, but it's gonna strip out the screw or cam out. A better solution is either a hybrid like this, which is a Milwaukee ECX number one, or if you wanna go with a multi-bit tool like this 11-in-1 by Klein Tools, you'll see a link in the description that's gonna give you nut drivers, a bunch of different bits, and specifically a number one Robertson which if you know any Canadians, they love the Robertson and for good reason. They're super handy when it comes to this type of wiring because it fits right into the screw and it always stays on and gives you plenty of torque. So highly recommend getting one of those. Make sure you're going in the clockwise direction, starting off with your ground. That is best practice and something I haven't done for many years, so I'm trying to get better at. And then you'll tighten that down on your bare ground, making sure it's cinched tight to the screw terminal and does not push back out. We'll do the same thing here for our neutral on our silver screw terminal. Again, keeping it down and making sure it pulls tight to the screw terminal. And then you'll finish off with your hot side and the black conductor in the clockwise direction with your number one Robertson, tightening that down. So this is what I would want to see. I want to make sure there's no insulation below the screw terminal that would separate the screw terminal from the actual copper. And also I don't want to have the insulation stripped far enough back where I have exposed copper past the housing. And then additionally, I would just go ahead and tighten down any of those unused screw terminals just as best practice. Again, keeping everything as close to the housing as possible where it's not sticking out past the housing. Now, hopefully that helped you out and kind of gave you that baseline of how to wire a standard residential grade outlet. Now, if you want to dive much deeper, which you should if you're taking on DIY electrical products, what different type of wire strippers do I like? Why do I prefer Wago 221 lever nuts over standard wire nuts? And also why I think you should step up to what's called a commercial grade outlet opposed to a residential grade. We'll go over all that and more in this video right here. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.